Welcome back to the KDLT Sports Bunker for our Extra Points video vlog. He's the fearless leader, Mark Ovenden. I'm the minion, Zach Borg. We're talking... Uh, <laughs> I have to mix up this intro minion. some way or another. Okay. <laughs> You're not wearing your flowered shirt tonight, though. No, uh, as you can tell outside, it's not exactly cabana boy season no, uh, anymore. No, it's not. I, I actually went home between shows and wore my leather jacket back to work. It's cold outside. Kind of goes right through you. I have a feeling mine's going to be making an appearance here pretty soon. Although I think it's supposed to warm up for a little bit, so not not quite winter yet. Well, not but winter, it's but it's uh, definitely fall for this Friday night when we have our football Friday. It's going to be chilly. Well, speaking of, it is week three of the prep and college football season. Uh, let's start off by looking back a little bit at week two. Uh, like we said last week, every week we like to take a look at what maybe stood out to us from the week that was. Uh, what was the performance on the high school level? That stood out to you from week two. Well, I shot the Brookings game, and I was really impressed with the Bobcats. Uh, they came at you with three different. You know, Mikey Daniels gets all the publicity, and deservedly so. He's a really great. He's a great player. Had a couple of long runs while I was there for the first half, but they came at you with three different run, running backs, and uh, all three of them scored. Uh, a couple of them. Uh, Jared, Jared, Gerald Maxwell scored three times in the win over Aberdeen, and. Um, Bird had that nice long 40-yard run when he made it to the end zone. So, yeah, uh, and so they kind of come at you in a lot of different ways. I was very impressed with them. They definitely look like a legit, legit number one. A team I came away impressed with is a team that uh, I guess I shot, even though they lost. O'Gorman looks really good to me. I mean, again, they lose 34-29 to Lincoln in a very good Dakota Bowl. Uh, obviously, Steve Keeter's teams have always been running teams. But they've got two legitimate running backs in Doty McQuinja. I got that name got right. That right. Yeah. It's kind of going to that could be the Caden Quintanella of this year in terms of name pronunciations that people are going to mess up but got it right there and also AJ Martinic, the quarterback Luke Fritch though, they can throw the football as well. They've got some good targets. Kind of like Rincali, you think you don't think of them being a passing team, but Luke Fritch looked really good. A lot of those guys are just juniors, so they're going to be around for another year. They're, they're probably going to be a favorite next year, assuming we still have this AAA setup. But to me, it looks like O'Gorman is going to be a team. I, I would not want to, as long as they keep improving and don't take any injuries. I know last year Fritch got hurt. That's not a team I want to see in the playoffs. No, Steve Keener was very, actually pretty excited about the team before the season even started, which is highly unusual. Um, and he likes this team because they aren't all guys that have dedicated their lives to football. They've got several athletes on this team. They've got a Division One swimmer. In Ben Johnson, they, they've got a lot of different guys that play other things. Uh, McQuinja is new to football. Mm. His first carry of his life came in the first game. Mm. Moved over from South Africa, and uh, he he uh, he's going to be a good one for them. But if Steve's excited about the balance he's got on his team and he likes the the spirit and the attitude of his team, I I wouldn't be wait until next year to get excited about them. Oh, yeah. They lost by five points to a really good Lincoln team, so it, everybody makes the playoffs, so it's who's playing the best at the end that matters. And they look like they're going to be really good. Doty kind of looks like a little Christian Okoye or a little Earl Campbell sometimes when he gets to the football. Yep. As we look ahead to week three, obviously the probably the most eye-popping matchup comes. It's really going to be one of the last games of the week on Saturday in the President's Bowl. Lincoln-Roosevelt. A rematch of last year's state title game. Of course, Lincoln won that one. Uh, the aforementioned Quintanella is now at Augustana, and a lot of those guys who were on that team are gone, but Isaiah Roach started that title game. They've got a few guys back. Roosevelt's been a little shaky on defense so far this year. They obviously nearly blew that 42-13 lead against Brandon Valley. Uh, the Washington game was a lot closer than we expected, although maybe you, you got to give some credit to Washington. They came out and put a really good effort together to lose 26-14. What are your thoughts on what, what should be a very interesting uh, 7 o'clock finale to the President's Bowl? I think it's going to be a high-scoring, fun-to-watch kind of a game. Both coaches have said that. Um, Aaron Beavers in particular you know, said, if I could just sit back and watch the game. Even if you're not a fan of either one of those teams, I think it would be a fun game to come watch. So if you're there rooting for Washington or O'Gorman in the first game, stick around because I think it could be pretty entertaining. Washington had... Thoroughly dominated their first game of the year at Aberdeen. They had over 300 yards offense, dominated the game, and just couldn't score. Right. Last week against Roosevelt, they came closer. I mean, and against Roosevelt. Yeah, and they were uh, winning for a while. Yeah, I mean, they played really well. I think they surprised a lot of us. But uh, 
I, they've got uh, they've got a good running attack. They got a good line. Watch for them to get better and better. They might be kind of the unsung team out of the four in terms of uh, you know later on down the season who's playing the best ball. I'm not saying they're going to be the best of the four, but I'm saying they're going to be a lot better than their 0-2 record is right now. Moving on to the college scene last week, obviously SDSU and USD moved on with their new quarterbacks. Zach Lujan looked very impressive against a good Cal Poly team. Ryan Sager looked all right. Uh, they kind of, I don't know, I was there for the while. It seemed like they knew they had the edge on William Penn. I don't think they were throwing the full playbook at him, but some points of concern there. Uh, both those teams are going on to play Big Sky teams. SDSU is at Southern Utah, who was in the playoffs a year ago. And uh, USD gets to go to Montana, which is, that was a game I kind of thought with Kevin Earl might be winnable. Now it, that's going to be even tougher sledding. Well, they've got four good running backs. And Sager can run, too. Sager yeah. can run, too. So that gives them five good running backs. Uh, he was eight for 13, I think, last week, and three of the balls were dropped by receivers. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. And he ran for close to 100 yards. So I, I, I think he had a full game under his belt. That's really, really important that he got that experience to, to be the guy from the start of a game. I think we talked about this on our last blog. Coming in off the bench when the starter gets hurt, I'm not sure it's an accurate representation of what you're going to be like as a starter. So both he and Lujan have that experience yep. now of leading their team for one full game. That's going to help because they might be the quarterbacks for the rest of the year. We don't know how soon that either Earl or or Sumner are going to yeah, be back. Six to seven, eight week. Th those are projections. You never really know how no. long. I mean, that, that could be how long it takes to heal. You don't know if that's going to be how long it's going to take him to get him in game shape. Uh, some other college games of interest this week. Uh, Augustana plays their home opener against third ranked Minnesota Duluth. Uh, not an easy task. They're com Aug Augie's coming off a 54 to nothing win, but it was over Crookston. So, right. but you got to be a little encouraged to see the way the offense at least put up some points, albeit lesser team. Other game I'm interested for is uh, Dakota State, who's 2-0 for the first time since 1993. Uh, off to a good start. They're playing Valley City State. So to, uh, this is actually year two where I'm speaking with Andy Carr, who's over at Presentation. Whoever wins that conference, the North Star, could get into the playoffs. I think they have to also be ranked as well. There's some other things. but Yeah, the size the, of the conference, I think, dictates that it's not an automatic. Not sure about that, yeah. but... You have to have a certain number of teams, I think, in yeah, your I conference. Think, well, you also have to – I think you have to be – there's some system where they have to be ranked, but in theory the playoffs are there, whereas it wasn't there as a first-year conference a year ago. Uh, it would be interesting to see if Dakota State's for real. They played Mayville, and they're playing – but Valley City's typically been pretty good. Uh, they beat Dort last week, who's obviously been toward the bottom end of the G-Pack, but uh, some good things happening in Madison. I'm glad for Josh Anderson. He's, he's hung in there. He's a Madison boy, too, the head coach, and so um, – to me, there's there's all the right things going for Dakota State right now. Uh, I think this is a this is probably a big game for them. This uh, they're two and zero, but this could be a springboard toward a really good season yeah. if they could win this in terms of their confidence. And um, Josh has Josh has worked hard to get this team where it's at now. And uh, a two and zero start is wonderful. Hopefully, they can win another game. And then they play Andy Carr's team and three weeks and it's amazing where presentation is to me in just the fourth year as a program they they won they won games their first year i mean they 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 i think it was my maybe their second game that they won uh won three or four games the very first year so they've they've done well and it's uh it's two more teams to keep your eye out for here in south dakota this year one more thing to wrap up uh, as we look back at last week. Obviously, Steve Shirley, uh, his contract was not renewed about a week ago with the Sioux Falls Canaries. They're searching for a new manager. I liked him. You've had a lot longer relationship. Uh, everybody liked him. It's been a tough couple of years ever since 2010 when they made the championship series. Uh, still, though, I mean, it's, the players seemed like they were still going hard for him every day. It just was one of those years where kind of everything went wrong, I guess, to Put it lightly. Well, they lost two or three of their guys before the season even started to organizations and guys they were counting on, like the top shortstop in all of independent baseball, and uh, not, not making excuses for him because he didn't make excuses for it himself. We had him on Calling All Sports last week, the day after it happened, and and um, he he's such a stand-up guy. You can't help but to, to really like Steve Shirley. Uh, I consider him a good friend when you cover someone for that long and you have as many uh, conversations as we do, you, you you appreciate the fact that he's always very f 
forthcoming as to what's going on, very honest, uh, a true baseball man, really knew the independent league. I, even though they were 33 and 67, I think the Canaries are going to have a hard time replacing him because he knows all the ins and outs of the league, the rules, who you can sign, who, how many guys that are veterans you can have on your team, how many rookies you have to have on your team, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and had great connections. Um, well, that, that brings up the next point, obviously, because the last four years were obviously rough, but he's still the only manager who ever really brought winning baseball to Sioux Falls. They had the championship in 2008, and as you've told me, they probably should have won it in 2010. So what do you look for in, a, in, in the next guy? Because this is a – I kind of feel a little empathetic towards him because I'm a Colorado Rockies fan at Coors Field. I mean, this is kind of the Coors Field of the – American Association. It's a tough place for pitchers. I don't think I think he's even said a few times it's a tough place to attract pitching, and that's been kind of a a downfall. So what does the next manager got to do to even come close to what Steve had done when obviously this team was in its winning years? Well, the greatest teams that they had were, I mean, they were sluggers. The 2010 team was phenomenal top to bottom and then of course Bo Torbert had one of the best years anybody's ever had in the history of independent baseball I'm not just talking canaries slash pheasants I'm talking on you know any level of independent ball or even minor league baseball for heaven's sake he hit almost 400 for the year over 20 home runs over 100 RBIs it was ridiculous what Bo did and there were several other players on that team that had monster years too and uh, you know, they had a couple of good pitchers that year, and Chris Regas was a great closer out of the bullpen. Um, but, you know, I think they got to go out and attract a team that's going to score a lot of runs because it's really hard to have a great team ERA when you pitch at the band box known as the uh, Sioux Falls Stadium or the Birdcage. I, I, I think it's a great place to watch a game because yep. you get to see offense. But it, it's, it's just going to be a tall order. And, again, learning the ins and outs of how – the American Association works and the rules of independent baseball, that's going to be the first thing that whoever they hire is going to have to learn unless they're fortunate enough to get somebody who's been around it and has that experience. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sad to see Steve go. I also understand it. It's a business. They had a horrific year, 33-67, and 67, a franchise worse. Ultimately, somewhere along the way, the manager takes the fall for it when the team does poorly. And he's more than just the manager. The Whoever they hire, he's the GM, too, had to wear a ton of hats. So whoever they hire is going to be able to, going to have to be able to do all of those things. Well, it remains to be seen. We'll probably know something in the next couple of months. Uh, also this weekend, too, if you're going out, don't forget we got a lot of great volleyball in town as well. Yep. Uh, the NSIC has a challenge uh, with USF and Augie are both playing. SDSU's volleyball team has a tournament up north as well. So not just the football, plenty of other good stuff happening this well, week. Augie had a great weekend last weekend, uh, won three and lost one in a big tournament out in Colorado and has moved into the top 25, and, and um, Ashley Buckley's pretty proud of that. They're ranked 23 this week, and, you know, that's just saying that uh, your program is getting that kind of national respect, which I think they deserve. They, You know, I, I, I think Ashley's just going to be a phenomenal coach for Augustana. The longer she's there – the more the winning tradition is there and they start to attract better players, the better they're going to be. They've been there before. Remember, they lost in the national championship uh, to Hawaii Pacific mm -hmm. in the greatest display of volleyball any of us have ever seen on a court around here. And I went and saw, watched Ashley play when she was at Penn State, seen big-time Division One volleyball before, but that Hawaii Pacific team was ridiculous. They were Really good. And Augie was, you know, they, they were terrific that year. So they got second in the national tournament the one year. But um, I, I think Ashley's on the right path to get them back to where she would like to see them be. Well, wherever you're going, enjoy this weekend's action, and we will talk to you again next week. For Mark Oven and I'm Zach Borg. Have a good one. This is KDLT Sports Extra Points.